Yo guys, what's going on and welcome back to a brand new video and something a little bit different here today. Now if you guys missed my video earlier on today, um, this is a video that I'm kind of doing as a consequence because my steering wheel has broken. So I thought I'd give you guys something that's been very requested in my comment section and that is a pretty much a setup video in terms of what I would use in F1. Now, a full disclaimer here. I don't really 100% know how setups work in the F1 games. I haven't really spent that much time or dedicated that much time to really completely understand how they work. And there's a lot of other guys out there, a lot of better people than myself, other than myself, that do better setups and give better explanations and reasons why. But um, for those of you that do want to know what I'm using and what I do, then by all means, uh, stick by the video. But like I said, I'm not the best guy for it, and um, I'm not going to be able to give you a proper detailed, you know, full explanation. I put my hand up, it's a full disclaimer, just so that I'm not really lying to you guys or, you know, claiming that I know something that I, d I know I don't really know. So, um, yeah, let's jump into the menu screen then, and uh, let's have a look at some setups. Now, um... It's a bit of an interesting one because me personally, uh, setups, I always kind of use what other people use and um, this video is going to be more about the, the base, kind of the, the key pointers of, of an F1 2019 setup on the car because I think setups can be track specific and this, is, this, this video is not about showing you the fastest setup for every track. This video is more about just showing you the general idea of how to achieve a fast setup. So... Um, yeah, obviously on the setup screen you have the five preset options here, uh, from default all, all the way down to maximum downfalls, all the way down to top speed. So you've got all the different options here. Um, generally speaking, in my opinion, uh, default setups in the last two or three games have been really, really good. And um, Codemaster has done a good job of the default setup of making it, the car feel very good. And you could actually go racing quite easily with the setup. I know a lot of people that uh, do use them. I believe the default setup is a very good option for China, for example, uh, specifically that circuit. And um, yeah, overall, if you don't know about setups, you know these are a, these are a good option to use, especially the, the balance one, the default setup. is a really good all-rounder for most tracks. But now let's move into custom setup territory. Now... Um, you're going to have the fuel load, the aero, you're going to have the transmission, you're going to have the suspension geometry, the suspension, brakes and tyres. Now, um, obviously in last year's game we had the ballast, which is now removed, which is pretty good in my opinion. It's something that I didn't really like in last year's game as it was a bit of an exploit. And if you, didn't, if you, if you can't drive with a very oversteery car, then you wouldn't like the setups in last year's game. Now, um, I've got a list of uh, setups so far and um, if we jump into a few, you'll see that so far these are all career mode setups. I've got Australia, Bahrain, China, Baku, Spain, Monaco, France, Austria, Silverstone, Germany, Hungary and Spa. Now, I could load them up one by one and explain them, but it's going to be quite long and ultimately I don't think it's worth it. I'll show you guys each of those setups at the end of the video, but first of all, for those of you that aren't that interested and just to get a bit of a general idea, we're going to move into the setup one by one now. First of all, um, a few pointers slash hacks. Now, in my opinion, um, you know, every, every year the F1 game has a hack or you know, a setting that you have to change for it to really... Um, bring out your pace and in my opinion in this year's game and also I think seeing other people's opinions elsewhere this year's game the key area is ride height because um when, they, when I first started using this game, I was running default ride height. You know, I didn't really change it much. Maybe I'd run like a 5.7 or 6.6. 6. And um, I quickly discovered that you want to be running at least like 4.4 4 at most tracks. Maybe 3.3 3 or 3.4. Um, really make sure that ride height is lower. Because I don't know why the car just seems a lot more generally planted. There's a lot more stability, um, more pace. The car can go quicker through corners. And you just have a lot more confidence at high speed corners. And... And um, for the trade-off that you get, it's definitely worth it. And I think there's a lot more pros to running it lower than running it higher in this year's game. And uh, again, you can always read the tutorial such explanation at the bottom of the screen if you need some help. But um, yeah, overall, I think a low ride height is the, the kind of the X factor in this year's game. This is where I think you make up a lot of your time. And I'd say most tracks, I would run a minimum 4-4. Four, four. And there's other tracks like Spa, uh, where I'd run 3-3, three, three, maybe uh, Monaco, I think I did 3-3 three, three as well. Um, just tracks that generally are less bumpy, you can run 3-3 th uh, three, three at. You know, there's other tracks which are really, really bumpy. Like, for example, Hockenheim is quite bumpy, so uh, for that one I did 4-4. Four, four. Australia is quite bumpy, so again, I did 4-4 four, four around there. Bahrain, I think you can get away with 3-3, three, three, or maybe 3-4, three, so it's a bit bumpy in places. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, that's the way you want it to go. Now, um, another key X factor, in my opinion, also on the suspension side of things this year, is suspension. Now, I'm talking about the actual suspension here, in this case, the front and rear suspension, because in my opinion, 
Um, similar to 2018, I find that a very, very low suspension, like I'm talking 1-1 one, one or 2-2, two, two, is the way to go. Now, the reason being for this is because in this year's game, especially this year, last year it, it happened, but this year a lot more. The curbs are very tricky to drive on this year. They, they can spin you off. They're very aggressive. If you hit them the wrong way or you know take you know too many chances with them or push the limit too much, they will bite you. And you need to have a little bit more... Um, confidence over them and I find that running low suspension really gives me that confidence at literally almost every track again with the exception of one or two where you might run a little bit higher um, you really want to make sure the suspension is low especially for those tracks where you know the curbs um, are really important to how much lap time you gain like for example let's say in Mexico when you go through the S's uh, all those curbs on the inside go through the S section where you need to take a lot of curb you want to be running low suspension to really take a lot of curb and maximize the lap time you know Silverstone, Magus Beckus and Chapel, uh, Cop like Silverstone is kind of the perfect track for this you know turn one and two you always use them curbs on the inside to really maximize lap time and that's where the suspension really helps you out Australia as well uh, going through the far chicane on the exit of the, of the right hander uh, where sector two ends and sector three starts at the literally you go through the left and then the right on the right the curb on the left hand side this year you want to really make sure you get on that and uh, running the lower suspension I find really really helps now um, for me those two I would say are the X factor and um, those two, I think, are two little points you really need to take on board. Then elsewhere, I would say just as importantly, but maybe not to the same extreme, but still very important this year, is the aerodynamics. Now, ultimately, this depends circuit by circuit. And, you know, it depends what car you're driving in career mode. It depends your fuel load. It depends if it's qualifying, race, wet or dry. So there's a lot of factors here um, to take into account. But generally speaking, um, I find error this year is a, a, a big factor as well with the removal of the ballast. It's important to get it right. And I find, for example, this year, the way to go of aero, you might want to maybe try running the front wing one higher than the rear wing, maybe, because it'll give you more of a front end, similar to last year's game. Also, you know, in complete opposite fashion, you can run a bit a little bit lower. Let's say, for example, if your car's feeling oversteery or there's a track where the back end just feels very light and, you know, wants to keep on slipping away, if you want to have a little bit more stability, a little bit more control of the car, whatever you're running the error, just make sure you're running the front wing at one value less than the, than, the, than the rear wing. That way you have a lot more stability. If you're running the other way around, you're going to have a lot more instability. So um, bear that in mind. And uh, for me personally, to give kind of a light example, Australia, I'd probably run like maybe 7-7 seven, seven this year, in this year's game. Last year, it'd be like, you know, three two or something or sorry two three it'd be quite low um but this year would be like seven seven um because obviously the ballast ain't there so you need to find that aerodynamics you know performance somewhere else and you have to just put on the aero onto the car so maybe something like seven seven you know in, in sheer contrast Bahrain's an interesting one Bahrain for example um you want to be you you can choose whether to be fast on the straights sectors one and three or you can be fast through sector two and uh, you know it's ultimately down to preference you know you could run around Bahrain like six six or you could run like Four four three four around Bahrain um, again. Spa and Monza, interesting ones. I did Spa recently. I think I ran like, I think six five or f- six six because I found that in Spa the AR are very quick through sector two, and I was quite quick through sectors one and three. So I could afford to put more wing on and be faster through the middle sector. So ultimately, it comes down to preference, and um, you know it depends on the circuit. Like I said, we'll go through the setups one by one afterwards, and I'll show you what I've been running. But overall, I would say if you want to be faster on F one and the default setup you've kind of maximized it. I would say the three things you want to change to improve your pace is the front wing arrow, the rear wing arrow, and then you want to go to the suspension. You want to look at the front and rear suspension and you want to look at the front and rear ride height. For me, those um, six slash those three like um, joint areas together are what you're looking at in terms of overall improved lap time. And uh, you want to make sure you're running the ride height and suspension lower, in my opinion, at most tracks. Um, try and go as low as you can, pretty much. That's the way I see it. A suspension, you can get pretty much get away with 1-1 one, one at any track. And um, you only need two for like a couple of weird tracks where the curb is a little bit more aggressive. But um, yeah, overall, I'd say that aerodynamics, again, this is all about track on track basis and also your fuel. Like I said, it depends whether it's a wet, uh, wet race, a dry race, um, qualifying fuel, race fuel, uh, league race. It just enti- entirely depends. But for me, aerodynamics is important. And like I said, suspension with the front and rear and the ride height of front and rear as well. Now, the other things are also important, but these are the things that I'm less familiar with and not so common with. Now, um, transmission is something that I don't really get. This is one of the things that I don't really understand in F1 that much. And... Um, in my opinion, I'm not the best guy for this. I think there's a lot of other people out there that can explain it better. I find, in my opinion, that the, the middle balance 
works pretty decently as it is. I wouldn't really change it much. I think you're re- you're talking about really like small margins of like extremes when it comes to like esports or high level league racing. If you want to really try and fund those extra like half a tenth of a second margins with differential and. Um, yeah, I think it depends. In a nutshell, the one you're looking at, the main one, is the differential on throttle. I'm not really sure what off throttle does that much, but on throttle, um, in a nutshell, if you run it 100%, which is locked, you're going to have the best traction, but at the same time, what this does mean is the wheels spin at the same time, therefore you're going to get more tire wear. If you run it more open, you're going to get maybe slightly worse traction, but you can control it, but you'll get better tire wear. So it's that kind of trade-off of you know managing your tire wear and managing your pace. So that is entirely up to you. Again, depends on the preference and the circuit, whatever you're feeling at a certain track. In terms of suspension geometry, this one's quite simple. Now, again, I'm not too familiar as to what each one does, but in this year's game, it seems to be the trend and the case that pretty much at most tracks, um, the, the neutral value is the good one, but if you want to go faster, at the cost of maybe some more tire wear, pretty simply. Um, the extreme setting is camber to the full right and toe to the full left. And then pretty much depending on your tire wear, you can bring it in a bit more, depending on how you can manage it. If you, you know, if you've got less tire wear, you can really max it out. If you've got more tire wear, you bring it in a little bit and try and control it. Same goes for the camber. And ultimately, it depends to you. But if you can get away with running it out and maxed out, then that's where you want to go because that's where all the pace is by running this maxed out each extreme. And um, that's the best way I'd go. Like I said, you've got tire wear, bring it back into the middle, into the default, and nothing will happen. Then, of course, suspension. In terms of the anti-roll bars, again, for me, 6.6 six works pretty well at most tracks. Uh, maybe I'll run a 7.5, and um, not much difference. Sometimes there's certain tracks where I'll run, like, maybe 9.5, 9.6, the front anti-roll bar. If you run a little bit stiffer, I find helps because you get a bit more control at high-speed corners, and that's what you want. Um, you'll get more tire wear, but when you go to high-speed corners... The, the front will bite a lot more, and that's what you want. So, um, yeah, and I find it also gives the car a bit more stability as well. Also, in terms of brakes, again, this is entirely subjective because um, braking is something that only you know how comfortable you feel with it, especially if you're not running assists and you don't want to lock up. This is entirely, you know, down to you. I don't quite have my ideal setting. I'm still kind of dabbling with it, but most episodes I'll probably run... Uh, 75, 56. That's what I'll use. In last year's game, I could probably use 82, 54. And uh, I'll, I'll probably get to that point on this year's game. I want to try and push that a little bit. And then I know most esports races were actually running around 85, 53 in last year's game. But the brake pressures are so high that if you press the brake a little bit too much, you're going to lock up. So I'd say just, you know, in my opinion, start off at 75 and um, go maybe 58. I wouldn't, I wouldn't say run 60 unless you're very good with, you know, uh, managing lockups. Uh, I would say just run at 58 highest. I run 56. And um, just try and build up that confidence, you know, going up one by one and try and get used to that locking up and uh, trying to control it. I'll hopefully get there in the end. And then finally, we have tyre pressures. Now, um, it's pretty self-explanatory, of course. You know, with pressures, you, wanna, you, you go higher and you want much more higher pressures, then you're going to get, of course, you know, higher tyre temperature. And therefore, it's going to give you more tyre wear. So the good and the bad about it is at a higher tyre a higher pressure will give you more lap time, but at, at, at the expense of overall tyre wear. And um, you don't really want that. Also, tyre overheating as well, which is a big factor in F1 games. If you overheat your tyres, you're in big trouble. And um, you don't really want that. So, in any, many ways, I'd probably say run it close to default, I'd say. Both front and rear, because you don't really want to have too much difference, too much discrepancy between the tyre pressures. Um, again, if you want to run lower, especially on the rear, you'll get a lot better traction. But also, you'll get you know a pretty poor rear end in terms of... You won't have much rear end grip at high speed corners. The rear will be sliding all over the place. And that will also generate high tire temperature and high tire wear. So it's all about the balance. I'd say there's not much in it. It's more like one click to the right, one click to the left, pretty much depending on the circuit. But literally so far in every criminal episode, I've run this neutral in a default value. Now, um, pretty much that's kind of the setup in many ways and what I've walked you through. Now we're going to go and look at some setups that I've made. So... Uh, I'm not going to explain them in too much detail, but just to go through them one by one, and you guys want to copy some, feel free to do so. My first ones, I'll probably say, weren't that accurate. I found out about the ride height around about Baku, Spain. So um, take into account my setups from pretty much Spain onwards, I would say. But let's jump into Australia first of all. I can't remember what I had. So we've got 5.4 wings, uh, 6,500 diff. And then you can see there, camber and tow. I've tried to go as hard as I can without having much of tire wear. And then suspension one, one, seven, five roll bars, five, six ride height. Before I found out that you could run like four, four, three, four. 
Um, and then brakes, you can see here, I went for 82.54 in Australia that race, and that worked out okay for me. And then tire pressures, literally the front tire, a little bit more air in the front, uh, one click to the right. Then in terms of bar rain, let's have a look at bar rain. This was one where I did a lot of setup work because I couldn't quite get the car to work. My tire pressure's here a lot higher in bar rain because I need to find lap time. I was really slow around there. The AI are very OP, so pretty high pressures. Uh, brake 75.57, that was my preference around there. That's what worked for me. A suspension 7.7, this was not... Um, a good move. Uh, you know, this is where I lost pace in Bahrain. My suspension was six one, really strange, and ten four on the roll bar went quite extreme. But uh, yeah, up in hindsight, I probably would have run four four ride high. I don't know why I did seven seven. That was a poor move. And uh, in terms of sus suspension geometry, full right, full left because I need more pace in Bahrain. Transmission ninety seventy five, pretty risky, but uh, you can get away with a little bit of uh, higher diff around Bahrain. I find. And then aero to one because you want to have that straight line speed and uh, be fast through sectors one and three. But uh, yeah, that was Bahrain. Now we're going to move into China. And this one, like I said before, China, the default setup is actually a good option for here. I ran six, six wings, uh, 70, 75 diff, not much difference so far. And then full right, full left camber and tow. And then two, two suspension, nine, seven roll bar with three, four ride height. And then the brake, 75, 56. And then tire pressure is a little bit higher as well here at, Ch at China, just because I wanted a little bit more pace. In hindsight, I'd probably run those a little bit lower, maybe one click less each uh, because tires overheat quite easily around there. Then in terms of the next one, uh, Baku, quite an interesting one. Again, I had to work quite hard on this because the AR were terrible. Tire pressures in the middle, default. I could have gone a little bit higher, I think, to find more pace. Uh, brake, 75, 56, which is going to be the trend you see mostly in my setups. Suspension, 4, 4, 9, Six one one, a uh, pretty straightforward one for me there. Suspension geometry, I should have probably pushed out camber and toe to the max because I had no pace around there. Uh, but at the same time, tire wear is quite tricky around Baku. Transmission 70, 75, and um, around Baku, uh, rear tires do really suffer around there. They, the rear tires, you you cannot get away from it. The tire wear is extreme, so I'd say run it below 75 and try and manage tire wear as best as you can. If you can get it down to like 50, that'd be great, but uh, yeah. Uh, Baku is a poor one. Suspension, uh, sorry, aerodynamic 7.5, quite interesting one there. Um, a bit of a different balance. I'm trying to get the rear to um, kind of turn in with the front and have a bit more of an oversteery car, if that makes sense. In hindsight, I don't think that was the right way to go. Um, I think maybe the way to go around Baku is probably something like 5.2 maybe, a little bit lower. Um, but again, this is something I'll learn going into future seasons. And then we've got Spain. We'll go into that around 5. So seven, uh, 6, 7 aero, uh, 7,500 diff. And then we've got uh, pretty much the same value again on, on the suspension geometry. Um, I'd say three quarters of the way up, uh, camber and tow. And then 117533 at Spain, pretty low ride heights there. And then 7556 once again. And then D4 tire pressures. And then Monaco, we're going to move into next. And we've got D4 tire pressures, uh, 7554. And Monaco is a track where you want to really make sure your brakes are towards the rear. You don't want to lock up at all. Turn one's a killer. You know, if you lock up a turn one, you go straight on. So trying to avoid lock ups at all costs. And then suspension, 117533. Again, Monaco can get away with low ride height, I feel. And then geometry, um, not much here. Literally one click to the left on the toe, one click to the right on the camber. You don't really need to change it too much. And then just transmission 700 and then 8 9 error because obviously Monaco is a very much an aerodynamic heavy circuit and you want to have good turn in through the corners. On to the next one, we've got France. So let's move into that one. And we've got 4 5 uh, wings, we've got 95 100 diff, and then 3 quarters of the way uh, camber, 3 quarters of the way tow, and then 119734 error around there. And then 75, 54 brakes again. I found that at France, locking up is very easy and it, quite, it can hurt you quite badly. So uh, run the brakes more towards the rear. Make sure you don't lock up. And then pressure's at default. Next up is going to be Canada. For some reason, I don't, I don't have a Canada setup. I think I must have um, ran default around there. I must have run a default setup at Canada. I didn't save it, one or the other. Either way, so Austria's up next. And uh, we've got default pressures. Uh, 75, 56 brakes once again. Suspension 117544, which is kind of a trend. To be honest, you can see the the, the pattern developing here. And then suspension geometry, uh, one click to the right, one click to the left in terms of camber and tow. 8500 diff, and then 44 on the error because you still want to have some aerodynamics for when you go through sector two through the corners. And then we're going to move into Silverstone, which is again a bit of an interesting one. 66 aero because I find there's too many high aero zones where you want to find lap time. Like for example. Uh, three and four, and then into Brooklyn's, Luffield, uh, Cops, Maggots, Beckett's, Chapel, Stowe. There's too many corners there where you need that grip on the front end of the car and also that rear end as well to stick. In terms of transmission though, 85-100, and then we've got camber, I think two clicks to the right, two clicks to the left. 
Then we've got 2 2 7 5 4 4. I reckon you'd probably get away with 1 1 around Silverstone as well. Um, around 2 2 just for precaution because sometimes 1 1 can make the cold a bit too light and you can lose control over the curbs. Then brakes are 75 56 and tyres in the normal default position. Then we've got Germany. And we're running default tyres here again, 2556 brakes, and then we've got 1175 aero, or sorry, ride height around there. Then suspension, uh, three quarters of the way up and three quarters of the way down. Transmission, 8500, and then 76 aerodynamics around Germany. Again, a pretty aero heavy circuit, especially that final sector. And then we've got Hungary, an interesting one, one that I struggle with a little bit. Uh, 98 wings, 7500 on the diff, and then uh, pretty much two clicks right, two clicks left. Then we've got 1175.56 ride height. I found the lower one didn't really work for me at Hungary too much. Uh, I'm not sure why, but I'll, I need to go back to that track and try again and find some more pace. I'd probably say that the lower ride height is still the way to go. In terms of brakes, 75.56 once again. Maybe 54 because um, turn one and the chicane is a bit of a tricky one. So you want to try and avoid lockups. And then tyres at default. And then we finally have Spa, which is where I'm at in career mode. And we've got default tyre uh, um, tire PSIs. And then we've got uh, brakes, again, 75.56. And then we've got 2.18633 on the ride height. Pretty low around Spa because you want to perform at that, you know, on those straights. And then we've got pretty high camber and toe, pretty much maxed out. And then we've got transmission, 7,500, and aerodynamic, 6.6. Six. Like I said before, sector two, I found out that they are very quick through there. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't too slow and I could keep up. So I managed to throw on some aero and make sure I could compete. But yeah, guys, that is going to be it for this video and my kind of basic F1 2019 setup guide. Hopefully you found it helpful. And if you have any questions, please do leave them in the comments down below. I'll try and get back to you. Like I said, I'm not an expert. This is merely to be a bit of a baseline, just to give you guys an indication of more or less where to go and how things work. And uh, this is on PC, of course. This is what I race on. But uh, yeah, guys, hope you found the video informative. If you did, then drop a like and also subscribe if you are new for daily Formula 1 content. And on turn off notifications to not miss a video from me. And finally, check out these two videos on your screen if you have missed them. But other than that, guys, thank you for watching. See you in my next one very soon. But until then, it's goodbye from me.